In the wake of all of this, the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, says Nigeria's gross domestic product GDP grew by 2.98% in the first quarter of this year. The growth rate, according to the Bureau, is higher than the 2.31% recorded in the same quarter in 2023, but lower than 3.46% recorded in the fourth quarter of last year. According to the Bureau, the performance of the GDP in the first quarter was driven mainly by the services sector, which recorded a growth of 4.32% and contributed 58.04% to the aggregate GDP. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed joins me now to discuss more on this recent development. Good morning to you, Mukhtar. Good morning, Justin. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, let's just uh, look at the economy. Uh, is the wake of the first anniversary of the president. Uh, some pundits say the president is resolutely focused on policies and actions that will attract long-term local and foreign investment to the country. Knowing that every naira and dollar of uh, new investment in the country means new jobs, increased productivity for local consumption and export, and of course, the much needed economic growth. But what are your thoughts, really? Let's just start by that. Let's just get a general overview of um, the president's administration one year after you know, inauguration. And Justin, it's, um, it's, um, it's hard to see food. <laughs> it's very hard. Uh, you look at this current administration, let's be realistic. Yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. What we've seen, it, the only good you've seen, you say, is policies. In terms of results, um, I think we've not seen any results. Uh, what we've seen with a lot of talks, a lot of policy, and um, some of these policies are even policies from ourselves. Um, let me give you one. Today, the CBN is, uh, is saying, Bureau the change, we are going to give you social amounts. The next day, you are saying, Bureau the change should come and re register. It just tells you the kind of uh, people where they don't think things through. Um, subsidy gone. And up to one year after you've not been able to come up with a national minimum wage, but it was easy for you on May 29 to say there's subsidy gone. Yet, till this moment, you've not been able to come up with strategy to grow the economy after the removal of subsidy. Life has become unbearable to Nigerians. Uh, we now have electricity tariff is one, one of the highest in Africa and one of the highest in the world. I stand to be proved wrong. And not the economy has not gotten any people employed the policy of the current administration has been uh, a policy that uh, has not driven the economy in terms of uh, you, you you said you wanted to float the naira so that you attract investors investment uh, we, we we have not seen those investment uh, uh, we tv total energy taking six billion dollars to and uh, then all of a sudden we are hearing from the Minister for State for Petroleum that $20 billion will be coming into our economy. It seems like you try to play the propaganda and say this is this is coming. And at the end of the day, remember before now, the minister said we are expecting $113 billion that is going to yeah. help boost our reserve. Up to this moment, no $13 billion have come. So when you look at the current administration, I think um, it has been an administration that have in inflated more pains on Nigeria, economical pains, cost of living has gone higher above 200 percent uh, since they came to power. Inflation is an all-time high. Exchange rate has gone above uh, above 150 percent since they came to power. So, if you look at all those variables, uh, it's hard. It's very hard. Like I said, the only thing you can see is policy. In terms of say, so, oh, they said that uh, we are we are coming up with this policy that we attract investment. We are coming up with this policy and policy, 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 policy. We've not seen results in one one year. Hopefully, he's saying he will reset the economy, and like uh, for the weekend. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, economic policy have been try and error, try okay. and error, try and error, try and error. Try this, it doesn't work. We try this. We we'll come up with one policy today, tomorrow they are. It's it's all messy and Justin. So a school of thought is saying that um, these are not really times to celebrate because, of course, um, they say that nothing fundamentally um, has uh, changed since the present administration uh, took office and Nigerians are further impoverished through poorly calibrated Nigerian policies, which you have mentioned now. But 
in all of this, um, would you say that uh, it's actually have been all pains? Are there any gains we can actually attribute to this administration? I said the only gain is in terms of the policy. You know, when you, you hope, you hope that some of this policy turns out positive, that's the gain. Because as you, as I'm sitting here, I'm not seeing any gain. Huh. What is the gain? There's no job. More jobs have not been created. Rather, we have seen more industry leave Nigeria. More are planning to leave. We have seen uh, industry uh, uh, record highest loss in terms of uh, profit after tax, especially uh, in multinational companies. We've seen the oil and gas sector, despite the removal of subsidy, the IOC, major IOC companies are, 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 are disinvesting from Nigeria. So what we have seen is policy that we thought we attract investment, but have not attract investment. The removal of subsidy, the only the good news that will come in there very soon, because the one effort that has been ongoing for the past 12 years, that the coming on stream of Dangote refinery, will see us now stop importation of fuel, which they will take for their credit because it happened during the administration, but the foundation was not laid by them. And it was not the removal of subsidy that made it. Even before the removal of subsidy, the gentleman and legal Dangote have already started uh, think, looking at uh, building his refinery. So what are those, what, 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 what can you attribute to this government that has really been positive? Is it the high cost of living? Is it the high cost of, 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 of transportation? Is it the high cost of importation of goods into the Nigerian economy? All the exchange rates that have moved from about six, five, four hundred naira when they came into 1,500. So everything looks gloomy and all these are driven by two major policies that they took. The removal of subsidy and also the uh, 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 floating of the naira. And uh, the ordinary these two policies are what should drive investment into your economy if they are well thought out policy. But as it stands now, it doesn't seem like they were well thought out policies. Okay, so in all of this now, what can we begin to do now? Because I'm trying to compare some of the issues, some of um, the figures that we really have. Specifically, if you look at uh, food security, you know, in April 22, uh, 2024, the food inflation rate uh, reached 40.53% um, year on year basis, uh, marking a substantial increase of 15.92% points, you know, from the 26.41 that was recorded just a month before the administration came into that means like for in about one year inflation food inflation specifically has um, gone up by 15.92 percent so there have been programs there have been policies uh, over time on this food insecurity that we have yet nothing seemed to have changed the nigerians are still buying food so expensively so what do we need to do it's been one year and uh, don't you think we need to start going back to the drawing board uh, what do we need to do in the immediacy Mokhtar? Justin, is there a board? <laughs> was there ever a board? <laughs> if there was a board, they would have done, the, you know, when you want to build a house, the architect will give you the blueprints. You see it on the board. Then at the time of building of the house, then you could say, oh man, this, this might not work up well, so let's rejink it. You go back to the drawing and begin to look at how you can do it. But this administration does not even have a board. The president even said it. His advisor said it. He tried to say the president was a bold leader that what, when he said subsidy is gone was not even in his speech. So that means there was no board at all. If there was a board, he wouldn't have said subsidy gone. So there wasn't a board. So I, 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 I just want to say there was no board. So they need to go, go and get a board now and then now begin to draw on that board so that when they have problem, they can go back to that board and begin to look at how they can redraw it. But... As it stands now, when you talk about food security, we know the reason why we're having problem with food security. This is largely driven by insecurity. Has this administration been able to address insecurity? They've not been able to address it yet. They, they, they could say they have a, enjoyed pocket of uh, uh, um, um, success, which I, 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 I can't I can say they've done that with a, a, a previous administration. They upped the game, but they are still little, little of violent year and year, soft target by the terrorists. And most of this soft target happened to be where ordinarily we should be having our, our uh, what do you call it now? It should be areas that we should be having um, uh, food, um, 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 the, the, the base of our agricultural um, product. Hmm. So they need to provide securities in those places. You said 15 point something percent, that is officially. 
you know that if you go to the market some of these uh, 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 household item daily household item like gary like rice like tomatoes and everything has gone up by over over 200 or sometime over 300 percent attributed to exchange rate <laughs> so there's a lot of challenge in, in the economy i think uh, the administration has made a huge mistake in the area of the exchange rate remember i keep saying it uh, where they move the exchange rate from uh, 900 to 15 just to meet up the parallel market, thinking by doing that there will be a conversion. And then there was, it was it was only in this administration we saw something like that. Normally we see the parallel market moving up to convert with the official market. This and the official market went to meet the parallel market. <laughs> and so there's a lot of uh, policies that have been driven by this administration that are not clear cut out policies. They are just they are microwave policy, hasty policies mm. that were just done with uh, with, with without thinking through it. And I think, uh, like what the president said, there's going to be a reset. Hopefully that reset will, will, will start to see it because whatever the CBN thought they have achieved, it, they just achieved it in terms of policies, policies, administrative. They've not attracted the kind of investment to mm. bring in inflow that will stabilize our currency. Rather, what the CBN um, governor has been doing is to to, to clear, uh, to, to maybe uh, send a lot of staff of the CBN packing. That's the administrative policy I've been doing. If you have been reading the papers today, it's 200 next to more. We are sending, we are sending more Nigerians to the to the to the unemployment market, unemployment market. That's what they have been succeeding in doing thus far when they came in. So a lot of work needs to be done by this administration. I can barely, barely, barely look hmm. and see something good. I try to, but it's not. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, speaking of reset and um, overhauling, like you have mentioned, in as much as the president came out other and said that any uh, non-performing uh, uh, state actor, minister, uh, ministry, department will actually, uh, or minister as it is, uh, would actually be sacked. Do you really think we need to overhaul or change our economic managers? Or uh, maybe we don't have the the right crop of people who should actually be putting us on the path of progress, on the path of growth and success. I think we don't have the we don't have the right set of people. That's just the truth. Economically, mm. um, it's, it's not about the ministers that they are there. Um, the minister for finance uh, uh, um, is somebody that uh, uh, um, a do has been has been in the Nigerian economy for almost forever. But when you ask yourself how productive has he been since he left government, when Tinubu was the minister, uh, was the governor, when he was uh, uh, a commissioner on that Bola Tinubu in Lagos State. The same thing with the CBN governor. What has he been able to achieve in the financial sector? Rather than being the chairman of Citibank, that was what he has done thus far. Since he left the administration of Bola Tinubu, what has he done? What business has he run? What economic policy, what growth agenda has he put in place? So when you look at all these things, it's just like we recycle uh, we, we we brought people that were retired back to the system and they are starting to learn especially in a critical sector like the economy they are trying to learn how do this economy do and they are doing their trial and error like i keep saying they are coming up with this today then tomorrow they want to go with this tomorrow they want to go with it that shows that they were not prepared for it so you need to run an economy that was already down and, and like i said for eight years there were no economy so it's going to be very difficult for President Tudubu to hit the ground running. And he, he wanted to hit the ground running, and he took some um, very, very critical policy uh, policy decision without a clear cut uh, uh, strategies. Because I am I've been an advocate for the removal of subsidy. I still believe that subsidy should go. I have been an advocate of the floating of the Naira, but when I mean subsidy should go, there's no government in the world that does not pay subsidy in one area or the other. When you say subsidy should go, and you are not cushioning the effect, then you are not ready. If you say you want to float your currency, you don't have the liquidity to to make sure that your currencies are not left in the hand of market forces because market forces have never helped any um, any uh, 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 country currency. And you decide to do that, and you didn't have the the watches, the, the 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 what I mean watches, the liquidity to make sure that your currency does not go below is real value and I, I think those two policies have been what have driven nigeria to where we are today and those policies in itself is supposed to attract investments those policies in itself is supposed to create jobs but because they were not clear cut out strategy on how to come rather those policies causing losses of jobs those hardship for nigeria
there must be a clear cut roadmap mm -hmm. when you want to come up with such policy like what they did. All right, Mukta, let's wrap up right now. Speaking of a clear cut roadmap, you know, because uh, we've said so much as per, you know, the poverty in the land, the suffering, you know, extensive taxation, uh, fiscal reforms that are not really uh, reforming, as it were, even the monetary policies and everything. But as it is right now, we cannot continue like this. Let's just see what we can do, or maybe in the, by ways of um, proffering um, solution. Because what can we do? Like I, I asked before, but I still need to reach rate. You know, Nigerians cannot really go to the market and even buy the normal staples anymore. What can we do in the next six months before the end of the year to at least bring a bit of sanity you know, to the country so at least uh, we can get the average thing that we ordinarily should be enjoying as citizens? One, the government has to take a bite of their revenue. First yeah. and foremost, food security. Nigerians cannot produce all that Nigerians need to eat. And when they don't have food on their table, it's cause for national security. I mean, it, it endanger our national security. Oh. So what I think the government should be doing now is to begin to look at most of the foods that are brought in, that are household items that Nigerians consume daily, especially the, 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 the very poor, and begin to see how they can drive down their, poly, their, their, their tariff on some of the importation of this policy, why they grow the indigenous ones also to be able to compete favorable with them. If they do that, within the next six to one year, then maybe we'll begin to attend to food security. And when I mean take a bite off their own revenue, is yeah. to begin to look at the policy, this uh, uh, instable, instable exchange rates, especially in the area when it has to do with good answer, they should look at fixing a definite rate. If you say your naira is undervalued, then what is the true value of your naira? Then let that be the value right. of the, 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 the value of goods that comes into this country. For me now, what they need to address immediately is food security. Right. They need to take a bite of their revenue and then encourage indigenous production of some of these uh, uh, household items. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mokta. That's as much as we can take. Uh, this uh, is an ongoing conversation, and we we need to still have uh, more concerning that because as it is, uh, our economy is not really uh, progressing. Thank you so much, uh, Mokta Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst. Many thanks for your thoughts that you have shared with us on the show today. Thank you for having me, Justin. Good All right. Pleasure. That's the size of the show for this morning. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of it. Bye for now.